let's manipulate the rotating terms in the quartic expansion of the ladder operator sum. In the previous video in the quantum mechanics playlist, I described the six non-rotating terms. The quartic expansion has a total of 16 terms. In this video, I will consider the 10 rotating terms. So I'll write those terms up here. So first, let's organize these systematically. I'm going to group them into 4, 4, and 2. So the first four are going to look like this. We're going to have raise, 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 lower, followed by raise, raise, lower, raise, then raise, lower, raise, raise, and finally, lower, raise, raise, raise. So these four terms over here all consist of three copies of the raising operator and one copy of the lowering operator. You can see that lowering operator migrates around. It migrates around the four positions that are available. Now let's have a look at the next four. So the next four are going to look like this. We're going to have raise, lower, 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 then lower, raise, lower, lower, then lower, lower, raise, lower, and finally, lower, 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 raise. So we have a similar pattern. So what do we have? We have three copies of the lowering operator and one copy of the raising operator. And this raising operator is migrating around the four available positions. And there are two more terms that we need to consider. Now I'll write those terms at the bottom. So one of those terms is raise, 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 raise. That's just four copies of the raising operator. And we can actually write this in a more concise way. We can write this as raise to the power of four. And implicitly, there is a lower to the power of zero. So there are no copies of the lowering operator here. And let's have a look at an, an analogous term to this. We have lower, 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 lower. And that can be written as raise to the power of zero and lower to the power of four. So you can see these two terms are analogous. And we don't have to do any further simplification for these two terms, because there's only one copy of these terms. But there are four copies of, of these combinations over here, where you have three copies of one operator and one copy of the other operator. So let's manipulate these guys and collect them together. If we were dealing with classical mechanics and we had a, a commuting algebra, then we would be able to just move these guys around and then have a coefficient of four. So we could group all these guys together and have a coefficient of four multiplying one term. And we can do the exact same thing for this. Now, we will be doing that, but there will be additional terms. These will be residual terms that are a direct consequence of the non-commuting nature of the ladder operators. So let me write down the commutation relation between the ladder operators. I'll write that in the corner over here. So if we have uh, the lowering operator followed by the raising operator, that is equal to the raising operator followed by the lowering operator plus one. Now, if these guys were commuting operators, there would not be a one over here. This would just be as plus zero. So swapping would have no effect. But because these operators are non-commuting, when you swap the order, you introduce a plus one. And we can also rearrange this equation by moving this plus one to the other side, making it a minus one. And that would give us uh, an equivalent expression for this combination over here. But we won't need that in this video. We did need that in the previous video, but for this video, this relationship will suffice. Now, let's have a look at how we can manipulate these guys over here. The form that I want to put these guys in is a form that is similar to the number operator, where we have all of the raising operators first, followed by the lowering operators. So on the left, we have raising operators, and on the right, we have the lowering operators. 
So when you take that combination and you act on a state, the lowering operators are going to act first, and then the raising operators are going to act after that. So that's, that is the order that we want to put them in. So it's a standard order. Now, let's do that. Let's do this manipulation. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, let's consider this top term over here. We can write this more concisely as the raising operator cubed. So we have three copies, and then the lowering operator over here. So this is done. This is all we want to do. This is exactly the form that we want it in. But these guys are not in that form. So let's rearrange these three guys and put them into a form that is similar to this. So let's have a look at this second term over here. We have raise, raise, lower raise. What can we do with these last two terms? Well, we can identify these last two terms as this relationship over here. So we can substitute this in place of these two guys over here. So we just swap the last two terms. Let's do that. So I can write this as raise squared, that's these two guys over here, followed by raise lower plus one. Right, so all I've done is just swapped these last two guys around, and that's introduced this plus one. Now I can expand this out, and that's going to give me raise to the power of two times this raise over here, so that's raise cubed. Right, so we have three copies of raise, followed by lower. And then we have an additional term, this plus one, and that's just going to be this raise squared. So we have raise squared. So this is exactly what we see up here. But we don't have an equivalence between these two terms because of this residual term over here. Now that is a direct consequence of the non-commuting nature. Now let's go ahead and, and do the same trick for these two terms over here. What we can do is we can identify this combination over here. We have lower raise in the middle. So we can leave these outer guys alone. And we can just swap the middle two terms. Let's do that. So we're going to have raise followed by raise lower plus one. And then we have another raise. So we've just swapped the middle two terms. Now, what are we going to get? Well, we're going to have raise, raise, lower, raise. So that's raise, raise, lower, raise. Plus, we have raise, raise. That's what we get over here. So you can think of this as a sandwich, right? We're applying this as a sandwich. We, we come from, from the left-hand side, and we come from the right-hand side. And that is the order uh, in which we construct these terms. So this has given us raise, raise, lower, raise in the first term. And over here, we've got raise and raise together, which is raise squared. It's that same residual term. But this term over here is not in the form we want it to. But we can identify this term as equivalent to this term. This is exactly what we see up here. And we have this form that we want. So all we can do is substitute this in here. And if we substitute that in there, we're just going to get a coefficient of 2 in front of the residual term. So that's going to give us raise cubed lower plus two copies of raise squared. So have a look at that. All we've done is introduced another copy of this residual term. So we've just substituted this relationship in here by identifying that these two terms are equivalent. Now let's have a look at the final term, and then we can add all these guys up together. Over here, we can swap the first two guys. We can swap these two uh, operators around. So that's going to give us raise lower plus one, and then two copies raise raise. Right? We have raise squared. So it's actually the opposite order to what we have up here. Over here, we have raise squared at the front, and now we have raise squared at the back, or on the right-hand side. Now, let's expand this out. Over here, we're going to have raise, lower, raise, raise. So that's raise, lower, raise, raise. That's from this first term over here, raise, lower, raise, raise. And then finally, we have raise squared. So that's raise squared over here. A very similar pattern to what we saw above. Now we can identify this term over here as equivalent to this term. 
And then we just substitute this over here, and that's going to give us raise cubed lower plus three copies of this residual term, raise squared. So you can see uh, there's already one of these copies, and then when we do the substitution, we get two more copies, and that gives a total of three. Now, let's take the sum of these four terms. So what is the sum of all of these four terms? So I'll write this uh, underneath. So the sum of all of these four terms over here, we're going to have, uh, I'll write this as uh, just these four terms added together. So that's just going to be four copies of raise cubed lower plus six copies of the residual term, raise squared. Right, so we get one copy of this from each of these terms, and then we have 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 0 over here, and that's a total of 6. And we can write this more explicitly, just like we did down here. We can write this more explicitly, and we can write this as 4 raised to the power of 3 lower to the power of 1 plus 6 raised to the power of 2 and then lower to the power of 0. You can see there is no lowering operator appearing in this term, so that's why we have lower to the power of zero. This term has the exponents adding up to four. That's what we would expect in a quartic expansion. And in this term, the exponents add up to two. Now that's not what we would expect if we didn't have this relationship over here. So classically, we would not expect this term to be appearing. So that is a residual term. Now, let's apply the same procedure to this over here, to these four terms. So first of all, the top term can be simply written as raise lower cubed. We just have three copies of the lowering operator. Now, over here, what we can do is we can swap the first two. So we'll swap the first two around, and that's going to give raise lower plus one, and then we're going to have lower squared. So two copies of the lowering operator, and then we've just swapped the first two around. That's going to give two terms, raise lower, 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 where that's the same as raise lower cubed. That's three copies of the lowering operator. And then from this term over here, we just have lower squared. So you can see this is very similar to what we saw up here. Just we have some analogous differences over here. The three has moved over to the lowering operator. It's no longer on the raising operator, and instead of having a raising operator squared as the residue, we have a lowering operator squared. Now let's have a look at the next term. We can swap the middle two terms. If we swap the middle two terms, we have lower, raise, lower, plus one, followed by lower. So we have a sandwich, just like what we saw over here. And we can apply that sandwich, and that's going to give us two separate terms. The first term is going to be lower, raise, lower, lower. So I'll write that over here. Lower, raise, lower, lower. So that's what we get over here. And then the next term has just two lowers, which is lower squared. We have lower squared. So those two come in together, act on this one, and that gives us lower squared. Now we can identify this term over here as equivalent to this term over here. We have lower, raise, lower, lower. And so we can substitute this into this expression, and that's going to give us raise lower cubed plus two copies of the lowering operator squared. So we have one lower squared over here, and then when we substitute, we get an additional lower squared. And finally, let's do this last step over here. So all we have to do is swap these guys around. And if we swap those two guys around, that's going to give us lower squared raise lower plus one. And we can expand this out. That's going to give us lower, lower, raise lower. Lower, lower, raise lower. So that's this first term. And then the residual term, lower squared. And again, we identify this term is equivalent to this term over here lower, lower, raise, lower, and we can substitute this inside here, and that's finally going to give us 
raised lower cubed plus three copies of the lowering operator squared. So we get two copies from substitution, and we also have this one copy over here. And now we can write the sum of these four terms, just as we did over here. We can write that sum. I'll write that underneath. That sum is four copies of the raising operator, followed by the lowering operator cubed, plus, again, six copies of the lowering operator squared. So we have three plus two plus one plus zero. This term does not have any residual terms. But these guys all have increasing numbers of residual terms. And now we can write that into the, in the explicit form that we saw over here. And that explicit form is going to look like this. We're going to have four raised to the power of one, lower to the power of three, plus six raised to the power of zero, lower to the power of two. Now, can you see that these are analogous expressions over here? So all we're doing is actually moving the numbers around. We're swapping these exponents around. So when we see 2, 0 over here, we see 0, 2. And when we see 3, 1, we see 1, 3 appearing over here. So now you've seen the full algebraic working for all 10 rotating terms in the quartic expansion for the ladder operator sum. So you can see where these terms have come from. These terms over here, this one and this one, they are what you would expect to see classically. You would also expect to see these terms classically. But because of this swapping that we had to do to group these terms together, we have produced these residual terms that are non-classical. And these terms have a very important effect when they act on states. So all of these guys will be acting on states when we do perturbation theory. So hopefully that was useful. Now you can see uh, all of the algebraic working, and hopefully you can uh, understand where all of the individual terms have come from in the quartic expansion. We'll be talking more about creation and annihilation operators, and we'll be using this neat condensed notation in later videos in the quantum mechanics playlist, which you can find over 